There comes a time when the rationality of men must fade into insignificance and one must accept the inevitability of the truth. I am not at liberty to disclose the following documentation at this writing. Perhaps it shall never see the light of public scrutiny, but I must do duty and record here for all to read one day. In a world of greed and exploitation of mankind can no longer suppress that which is truth. The vast, frozen expanse of Antarctica has long been a source of mystery and intrigue. Rumors and speculation about anomalous structures and ancient ruins buried beneath the ice have fueled intrigue and controversy in the world of Antarctic exploration. Satellite imagery and ground-penetrating radar have revealed intriguing anomalies that some researchers believe could be evidence of a lost civilization or advanced society that once inhabited the continent. While skeptics dismiss these claims as fanciful speculation, the tantalizing possibility of uncovering ancient secrets hidden beneath the ice continues to capture the imagination of adventurers and conspiracy theorists alike. Some hollow earth theorists propose that the South Pole is a key entry point into the subterranean realm. Unexplained phenomena, such as magnetic anomalies and alleged secret military operations in the region, have fueled speculation about hidden passages leading to a hollow earth civilization. The story became even more thrilling when Tess Medal of Honor recipient Admiral Richard E. Byrd revealed that he had an encounter with a lost civilization in Antarctica. Sadly, the government ordered Byrd to remain silent about what he witnessed during his Antarctica assignment. March 11, 1947. I have just attended a staff meeting at the Pentagon. I have stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I am now detained for several hours, six hours, 39 minutes to be exact. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team. It was an ordeal. I am placed under strict control via the national security provisions of this United States of America. I am ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on the behalf of humanity. Incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. The government's muzzling further fuels speculation about the existence of an underground ancient race in the South Pole. So what exactly is truth? Is our planet hollow and is there an underground civilization in the very center of the Earth along with its central sun? Join us as we dig deep into the compelling mysteries of the inner Earth in Antarctica exploring the scientific discoveries, speculative theories, and ongoing quests that have captivated the imagination of explorers and researchers for decades. A brief history of Antarctica adequately provides a contextual background by which a clearer perspective on our current dilemma can be understood. Recent studies reveal that Antarctica, India, and Africa once comprised the supercontinent Gondwana until they broke apart roughly 80 million years ago. Antarctica was teeming with both animal and plant life, and the landscape was largely flat and demarcated by a slow-moving river. Through analyzing the sediments, both offshore and along the coast, in 2013, it was determined that around 34 to 24 million years ago, the glaciers began carving out the steep mountain ranges and valleys that lay under today's ice cap. However, the crustal displacement theory contends that humans could have still been living in parts of an ice-free Antarctica as recently as 12,000 years ago. A number of Antarctica maps derived from ancient cultures showed the continent was not always covered under ice. A Turkish admiral named Piri Reis, credited with creating an early map in 1513, depicts Antarctica to be ice-free long before its western discovery by two Russian explorers in 1820. The race map was found at Istanbul's Topkapi Palace in 1929. Additionally, two decades after race in 1534, Orance Finet composed a map also displaying a remarkably accurate, deglaciered landmass. Yet another cartography contribution was Oranthius Phineas's map in 1531 that even showed Antarctica's mountains and rivers. 
All these maps, featuring a pre-glacial Antarctica, closely approximate the modern map of the continent minus its current layer of ice, strongly pointing to evidence that humans once inhabited this region in a hospitable climate. It's believed that these early 16th century maps may have been partially compiled from ancient sources dating back to the Egyptian and Sumerian civilizations. Further supporting this belief of ancient civilizations inhabiting the continent, scientists have recently discovered two large pyramids located just 10 miles inland and a third near the coastline. NASA's Operation Ice Bridge has experts believing an ancient civilization once existed under the 2.3 kilometers of ice. The team of American and European researchers feel this could be their smoking gun, proving that Antarctica was not a frozen tundra, but was once teeming with plentiful plant and animal life that included human beings. Of course, wherever pyramids are discovered, speculation always abounds, connecting them with extraterrestrial contact. Additionally, recent scientists believe the lost city of Atlantis could lie under the continental ice shelf. If these latest revelations turn out to be true, it would forever change our perception of history. Egyptologists and scholars have long believed that the Egyptian Sphinx is far older than 10,000 years old, even up to 800,000 years old. Water erosion on the world's largest statue indicates that the climate in Egypt likely changed drastically from a rainforest to a desert in a relative short period of a few thousand years. This view is consistent with conclusions held by scientists studying climate change in Antarctica as well, further reinforced by the maps of the early 1500s that remarkably match today's radar images of present-day subglacial Antarctica. Moreover, in recent years, enormous pyramid structures have also been discovered in Mexico, Central and South America, China, Kazakhstan, Bosnia, among other places. Building these mysterious mammoth structures has only reinforced a common assertion that ancient cultures around the world may well have been assisted by advanced alien technologies. Fast-forwarding to the 20th century and Hitler's passion for utilizing ancient occult knowledge and exploration that he was certain would aid his ambitions, promoting his Aryan super-race as Earth's self-anointed rulers. The German dictator's undeniable connection to Antarctica runs deeper than the thick two to four mile ice shelf covering the continent. William Tompkins, a brilliant young American naval engineer, instrumental in advancing the US weapons design and aeronautics technology during World War II, has gone public reporting that naval intelligence spies infiltrating behind German enemy lines reported that Hitler's war machine was being aided by alien space technology. It was Tompkins' daunting task to utilize vital incoming information and secrets for optimal use in developing America's interstellar space propulsion program. Tompkins even maintains that several extraterrestrials masquerading as his secretaries, in attractive blonde humanoid female form, were members of a so-called Nordic alien civilization, furnishing him with crucial knowledge that facilitated progress breakthroughs in early aerospace technology. Tompkins documented his involvement in the U.S. Navy secret space program in a book published a year ago entitled Selected by Extraterrestrials. William Tompkins has also corroborated the Nazi connection establishing an underground German military base in Antarctica. Another remarkable story is a letter allegedly written in German by a seaman on the U-209 submarine named Karl Unger. He explains that Dr. Karl Haushofer, a former German army general and influential political geographer, had given Unger's submarine captain Heinrich Broda detailed instructions and maps to navigate to specific coordinates in Antarctica that enabled them to enter underground caverns that then led to the hollow earth. Unger said the entire crew would remain there. The war records do list that U-209 as missing. Evidence of the hollow earth theory was further reinforced when Tess Medal of Honor recipient Admiral Richard E. Byrd revealed that he had an encounter with a lost civilization in Antarctica. Shortly after the war through U.S. intelligence services, Operation Paperclip was spawned, granting safe passage for relocation to America 
more than 1,500 German scientists, engineers, and skilled technicians for immediate employment. Despite destroying evidence, the U.S. government learned of Germany's advances militarily and the ET assistance that enabled them. So the program was developed to jointly gain an unsurpassable military advantage while jump-starting a fledgling aerospace program as well as deny Germany, the Soviet Union, and the rest of the world the German brain power. To Washington's consternation, thousands of scientists, engineers, and Third Reich military and political leaders were never accounted for. Neither were scores of German submarines. Inside sources suspected many had escaped to the German underground base in Antarctica. To seek and destroy perhaps the enemy's final refuge, Admiral Richard Byrd was the natural selection to lead the military expedition called Operation High Jump. Billed as a reconnaissance mission to establish the research base Little America 4, the operation hit the high seas in December 1946. When encountering the press, Byrd tended to be more truthful than his government preferred, and just prior to embarking, he openly stated that High Jump was a military expedition to look for some bases. By January 1947, Byrd's Navy Task Force 68 fleet, consisting of 4,700 Navy and Marine personnel, 13 warships, including an aircraft carrier, a battleship, and a destroyer, and 33 aircraft, had reached their icy destination and set up their base camp from which to locate and take out the secret Nazi base. Never before had such a vast operation been deployed to the southernmost continent. During the first few weeks of settling in and engaging in reconnaissance and surveying, outside of some close calls under extreme harsh climate conditions, everything seemed to be progressing as scheduled. While on two reconnaissance occasions, the flight navigation and radio equipment on Byrd's aircraft failed while flying over a plush green valley, lakes and rivers free of ice in 70 degree F temperatures. This strange anomaly has fueled speculation over the hollow earth theory. After nearly two months on assignment, suddenly out of nowhere, the naval task force was attacked by combat power and conditions never before witnessed on a battlefront. Seemingly springing up out of nowhere from the water emerged a number of saucer-shaped craft that exerted a force field shield that appeared to be controlled by anti-gravity UFOs. In the mayhem, three U.S. ships were sunk, including the destroyer. The six-month operation was forced to abruptly abandon its mission. This was alien technology in action. As the defeated task force began its return to the U.S., Admiral Byrd's initial press report from Chile explained that his mission had to be aborted due to taking in too many casualties. The Chilean newspaper El Mercurio ran a March 5, 1947 article stating, Admiral Byrd then declared that it was imperative for the United States to initiate immediate defense measures against hostile regions. The Admiral further stated that he didn't want to frighten anyone unduly, but that it was a bitter reality that in case of a new war, the continental United States would be attacked by flying objects which could fly from pole to pole at incredible speeds. Admiral Byrd repeated the above points of view, resulting from his personal knowledge gathered both at the North and South Poles before a news conference held for International News Service. Byrd arrived in America from his failed operation on April 14, 1947. Again, when he later testified before Congress, the Admiral reiterated his alarming warning. In case of a new war, the U.S. would be attacked by fighters that are able to fly from one pole to the other with incredible speed. Exactly what he meant is open to question. But what's clear is the advanced aeronautic technology his task force encountered makes space travel very conceivable, suggesting that he was either attacked by an alien force or an advanced German air superiority aided by extraterrestrials. Definitely, there can be no doubt that the German military in Antarctica had acquired advanced space-age technologies from an alien civilization or a hostile extraterrestrial force existed under the ice, or a joint combination of both violently repelled the mighty American naval fleet. 
Bird's enigmatic assertion leaves open the possibility that his opponent could navigate from pole to pole through a hollow earth passageway, surmising that World War II would likely be eventually fought at the poles. National Geographic featured Bird's high jump story entitled Our Navy Explores Antarctica in its October 1947 issue, but no sooner was it published, the U.S. government immediately pulled virtually every issue of the magazine from circulation. Coincidentally, in July that same year, the UFO crash in Roswell, New Mexico was also quickly covered up, like Byrd's violently close encounter with ET technology at the South Pole. Roswell allowed reverse engineering to aid the black ops programs to begin developing their own anti-gravity spacecraft. A probable UFO crash in Germany's Bavaria in the summer of 1936 helped give the Nazis a full decade head start. According to an Admiral Byrd 1947 diary, the renowned polar explorer discovered an advanced ET civilization inhabiting a hollowed-out center of the Earth during an Arctic expedition dated February 19, 1947. Among the most incredible stories in history, for good reason, it's been ignored by the U.S. government but scooped up by hollow earth aficionados as their biblical proof. February 1947 must have been quite a year for the polar bird man. While during his well-documented Operation High Jump, the Admiral was getting his ass kicked by aliens or Nazis equipped with alien technology at the South Pole in February 1947. According to Byrd's secret diary, at the other end of the Earth's North Pole, he was also entering the magical alien world of Agartha for a sobering sight-down chat with the advanced civilization's master, warning him that if humans continue their evil warlike ways, doom and gloom awaits. Our interest rightly begins just after your race exploded the first atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. It was that alarming time we sent our flying machines, the Flugelrads, to your surface world to investigate what your race had done. You see, we have never interfered before in your race's wars and barbarity. But now we must, for you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not for your man, mainly that of atomic energy. Our emissaries have already delivered messages to the power of your world, and yet they do not heed. Apparently, the government knew about Agartha before Bird. According to the Master, places such as Tibet, the Great Pyramid of Giza, and the North Pole all have tunnels leading to Agartha. What else did the Master teach Bird? What about the rest of the Operation High Jump crew? Bird didn't uncover the underground world alone. Though it's highly unlikely that Admiral Byrd flew to the hollow earth from the North Pole in February 1947, supposedly on his final Antarctic expedition little more than a year before his death, the renowned American explorer is reported to have reached the South Polar opening during a January 1956 flight. Perhaps having contacted the advanced hollow earth race already on previous journeys to the poles, or minimally seen for himself, that warm green areas with ice-free lakes exist near and beyond the South Pole and firsthand witnessed UFO battle capability. At the outset of his final trip to Antarctica in November 1955, Admiral Byrd stated, This is the most important expedition in the history of the world. That's a pretty big statement. We can infer that he is drawing on his already amazing experiences flying over the poles and most probably beyond. On February 5, 1956, several weeks after his highly anticipated journey, Byrd announced on the radio to American media back home. On January L3, members of the United States expedition accomplished a flight of 2,700 miles from the base at McMurdo Sound which is 400 miles west of the South Pole, and penetrated a land extent of 2,300 miles beyond the Pole. If he actually traveled another 2,300 miles beyond the South Pole and not flown into the hollow rim opening, but kept flying on a straight course over Antarctica, Byrd and his crew would have nearly reached the middle of the Atlantic Ocean near the equator. And we know that didn't happen. So the most logical conclusion is the 2,300 miles beyond the South Pole must have taken his plane into the Earth's interior. 
On March 13th, the day he returned to America from his final polar expedition less than a year before his death, the great explorer referred to Antarctica as that enchanted continent in the sky, land of everlasting mystery. Ray Palmer, editor of Flying Saucer Magazine, responding to the preponderance of UFO sightings at the poles, concluded this about the pair of flights Admiral Byrd made over each pole. The flying saucers could come from these two unknown lands beyond the poles. It is the opinion of the editors of Flying Saucers magazine that the existence of these lands cannot be disproved by anyone, considering the facts of the two expeditions which we have outlined. Richard Evelyn Byrd's final diary entry is dated December 30, 1956. These last few years elapsed since 1947 have not been kind. I now make my final entry in this singular diary. In closing, I must state that I have faithfully kept this matter secret as directed all these years. It has been completely against my values of moral right. Now I seem to sense the long night coming on and this secret will not die with me, but as all truth shall, it will triumph and so it shall. This can be the only hope for mankind. I have seen the truth and it has quickened my spirit and has set me free. I have done my duty toward the monstrous military industrial complex. Now. The long night begins to approach, but there shall be no end. Just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of truth shall come again, and those who are of darkness shall fall in its light. For I have seen that land beyond the pole, that center of the great unknown. It's more than probable that the Admiral reached the Earth's inner core. His radio announcement was never followed up in the press, because the government obviously suppressed any further publicity covering his wondrous discovery 2,300 miles beyond the pole. Obviously, from his final entry, he wanted to share everything about his spectacular travels and life-changing experiences. But by 1956, Washington was long committed to carrying out its sinister policy of secrecy, lies, and even murder to deprive Americans and all of humanity of the truth. Like President Eisenhower's prophetic warning in his 1961 farewell address, Byrd saw firsthand the monstrous military-industrial complex. If an intelligent civilization that only knows peace and compassion lives in the Earth's interior and we were told the truth back then, it would have ended the Cold War and undoubtedly changed the fate of mankind forever. As an honest individual, Byrd must have suffered excruciating inner conflict and pain. Keeping what he knew secret from the rest of the world, it had to have eaten him up inside. Limited to speaking only in vague, lofty innuendo and unable to fully disclose what he'd seen, perhaps that literally did kill him as the American hero died less than two and a half months after his final diary entry. And there is no doubt that his reticence to disclose had much more to do with the tragic fate that befell his former boss, colleague and friend James Forrestal than it did following orders as a military officer. The Secretary of the Navy that sent Byrd down to Antarctica on his 1947 military high-jump mission was James Forrestal, a one-time naval aviator himself, a successful businessman, and in September 1947 the first U.S. Secretary of Defense. He was privy to all the secret cover-ups of the federal government, from the UFO phenomenon to the secrecy of the U.S., Nazi, and alien space technology. 1947 was a busy and eventful year as Majestic 12 was also formed in July per an executive order by then-President Truman. Majestic 12 is the top secret committee comprised of scientists, military leaders, and government insiders invited on a need-to-know basis designated to oversee and conceal all alien phenomena and documentation. James Forrestal was a member. Because the Secretary of Defense advocated an open policy of disclosure to his fellow Americans and was both a supporter and ally of Admiral Byrd, his push to reveal the existence of UFOs and the deceptive machinations of the FDR Truman wartime administrations became a thorn in the side of the rogue government. Moreover, the forceful Forrestal also strongly opposed globalism and the establishment of the State of Israel. Hence, 
his smear campaign and ultimate demise. Forrestal's uncompromising, moral high-ground stance had to be neutralized as he threatened to expose the criminal cabal operating at the time as the federal government, having compiled a multi-thousand-page diary that the New York Times claimed could fill a file cabinet, revealing all the inside secrecy he'd been observing. By the end of March 1949, Truman fired him and took possession of his diary. And within a week, in early April 1949, against his will, America's first Secretary of Defense was committed to Bethesda Naval Hospital for mental exhaustion. He was branded mentally unstable, and that was all that was necessary to arrange, a few weeks later, his suicided murder on May 22, 1949, claiming that he had plunged to his death from a small 16th floor hospital window. The flawed death investigation was concealed for 55 years before it was released in 2004, a heavily redacted, top-secret government document with Majestic's fingerprints written all over it stated, the untimely death of Secretary Forrestal was deemed necessary and regrettable. Both Forrestal and Byrd wanted to reveal to the outer world the truth about the interior world and the advanced extraterrestrials and Forrestal's murder had to be taken as a direct threat by Admiral Byrd. Open your mouth, and you'll be next. So, in March 1957, Admiral Richard Byrd went to his grave less than eight years later, still holding on to all his incredible secrets, and other than uttering his few ambiguously suggestive and poetic statements providing only glimpses of the deeper truth, explore Byrd's death was intended to be the nail in the coffin against any further hollow Earth disclosure, at least from a government insider source. With the creation of Majestic and then NASA a year after Byrd's death, the assigned official gatekeeper of scientific truth was firmly compartmentally in place, ensuring that the solid spherical Earth hoax would be maintained. And another half-dozen years after Byrd's passing, the same rogue government was free to once again get away with another murder, silencing the last honest U.S. president trying to represent the people's best interests. But as we enter 2024, the truth has never been more exposed than it is at this historic moment. Momentum's on our side. And just a few years ago, lending credence to secret Nazi military bases at the Poles, comes news when Russian scientists unearthed an abandoned Nazi base in the Arctic after German scientists apparently ate infected polar bear meat in 1942. The base was likely part of the Third Reich's treasure finders research teams searching for ancient artifacts. Previously, a Russian study found a massive golden swastika over 100 meters wide and long that lays 13,100 feet deep at the bottom of the largest Antarctic freshwater lake the size of Lake Ontario under miles of thick ice. The waters of Lake Vostok are believed to have been untouched for 20 million years. Rather than attribute the swastika to the Nazis and their nearby underwater subterranean caves and bases, this swastika is far more likely linked to the ancient religious symbol for peace that originated on the Indian subcontinent. In 2017, an anomaly surfaced in Antarctica. Right in the center of what could be a 300-mile-wide impact crater is the home of a massive buried object laying under a deep coat of ice that emanates a concentration of powerful gravitational energy measured from a NASA satellite. Some believe it's an enormous meteorite three times the size of the life extinction asteroid that 250 million years ago wiped out the dinosaur. 70% of land-based vertebrates, and 96% of the Earth's sea creatures. But others speculate that it's one more piece of mounting evidence of a secret Nazi UFO base, perhaps the one that attacked Admiral Byrd's Operation High Jump seven decades ago, or the underground base mentioned next, that's apparently still in operation under the ice. A growing body of supportive evidence is frequently discovered on Google Earth, such as the large open entrances to a subterranean world with saucer-shaped figures lodged in ice. The UFO fervor keeps intensifying, centered on the Antarctic mystery as a probable portal to otherworldly activity. The poles have long been associated with being multi-dimensional vortex fields, 
that act as Earth entry and exit points for intergalactic spacecraft travel. When considered together, all of these odd cumulative findings and anomalies from Antarctica that keep popping up on a near daily basis beg for definitive answers to questions that can only be attained through open inquiry and thorough investigation. After all, the documented true story of Antarctica's inner Earth mysteries is a testament to the enduring allure of exploration and discovery. From the quest to uncover hidden subglacial lakes to the search for evidence of ancient civilizations buried beneath the ice, Antarctica continues to intrigue and captivate the human imagination. As scientists and explorers continue to push the boundaries of knowledge and understanding, the mysteries of Antarctica's inner Earth may yet yield their secrets, offering new insights into the planet's past, present, and future. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.